starting, I'm going to talk about uh, tips and tricks of shipping a world-class video game. That um, kind of sounds of presumptuous a little bit, but the idea is to talk about uh, publishing when you don't have a publisher. All right? So my name is Nick, uh, Nicolas Liorzo. That's, that's French. Uh, I'm actually from Montreal, Canada, Quebec. And I'm uh, the uh, managing director of uh, Keyword Studios. Uh, Keyword Studios is, uh, so I'm managing director for the Americas, for K Keyword Studios Group. So today, again, I'll be talking to you about some challenges we've been observing uh, in the video games industry in general uh, when studios look to self-publish their games, uh, which might be the case for some of you guys. Who's been trying to self-publish your game here? All right, good luck. Um, being, a, being an indie school, uh, I think we would agree about it, but it comes with a few challenges, and uh, again, uh, my goal is to go through most of them. I mean, some of them. And, and based on those feedbacks as well, um, we're, we're also starting to see an emerging alternative solution when it comes to publishing your game. And again, I mean, you can decide to either go with a publisher, uh, which is like the, the most obvious and, and sensible choice for a lot of people, you can try to self-publish and do it all yourself, which might not be the easiest challenge, but it's feasible as well. Or you can go with an alternative solution that we've been developing with keywords and with some few customers that we call publishing as a service. So I'll develop a little bit what it means uh, later on. Um, so that's namely again an experience that we've been, be, we've been building up uh, with the keyword studios. And uh, I'll name me talk about one of the main examples that we had, which was with Cloudcade, uh, a game uh, that they call like, Shop Heroes. You might have known about it. Um, so we've actually done most of it with Cloudcade. So just to give you some context first about uh, what we do, like what's Keyword Studios, I mean, what, what's our role in all of it? So Keyword Studios, we're the, uh, the world leader when it comes to service provider for the video game industry, okay? So we provide a bunch of services, and even though you might not have heard of Keywords itself, you might have heard of some of our brands. Um, because Keywords, we've been acquiring a bunch of company. The company was created in 1998 in, in Dublin, so you probably don't see much of it. But So anyways, we, uh, so the company was created in Dublin and is now public. Um, so it's Irish based, but traded in London. Uh, and we've been acquiring over the past two and a half years, uh, a series of companies that are well known when it comes to video game servicing, such as Alchemic Dream uh, that provides customer service and community management services, um, Babel that's for QA, so quality assurance, um, testing in general, uh, Binary Sonari as well, Synthesis, that's uh, the top leading localization companies when it comes to, uh, to localizing a video game in whatever language. Um, and, uh, and then a few art companies as well, such as Liquid Development as part of the Keywords Group, uh, Lakshya based in India, uh, or Mindwalk based in Beijing. So all of those are part of the Keywords Group. And part of it is also Kai Team, uh, which has an office in Mexico City. So we're like, not very far from here. So what we do as Keywords, we offer a bunch of those services. So again, we're not a publisher. We provide services mostly for the publishers, but also for whomever needs those services specialized for video games, right? So among those services, you would find uh, art. So art is like more of production services, so building up art assets, animation, concept art, um, all of those. Uh, but we also provide so audio production, namely localization, so dubbing. Uh, so most of the, I mean, a big share of the AAA games that you would play here in Mexico, dub, dubbed in Spanish, Mexican Spanish, were actually done by us. Just so you know, that's us. Uh, so you can blame us as well. It's fine. Uh, we also do uh, some localization, so translation, namely um, functional QA, so finding bugs. Um, so all the bug-free games, we tested them. All the games that still have bugs in them, that's probably some competition, uh, more or less. Uh, and uh, localization QA, that's part of it as well, and customer experience. So customer experience, there will be customer support, so replying to tickets. That's a lot of community management, and more and more, it's social media management as well. It's interesting to see that now, 
people being angry about a game, I mean, because it doesn't work or the credit cards don't work, I mean, they need, reporting a ticket, they would do that over Facebook, over Twitter, over Snapchat, or whatever. So it's, it's actually more and more all integrated with um, social media communities and this kind of stuff. So that, that's keywords. And uh, all of us are spread like through, uh, through a bunch of countries and places and whatnot. And again, I mean, take most of the AAA games you've been working on, there is a very good chance that you worked on it in a way or another. So again, talking now about more precisely uh, the, um, the experience we had on, with Cloudcade on Shop Heroes and, and what we call like shipping a world-class indie game. World class here, sorry about it, that might sound kind of presumptuous again, uh, but that's the thing. At some point, you need to set your expectations, all right? If you want to have any kind of success with your indie game, and th that's, I don't want to be to sound like a lesson giver or whatever, but it's, again, based a lot on experience. If you want to be able to have success in your indie game, and success means cashing out and getting money out of it and making a living out of it, your game needs to be world class. Okay? So it means it just doesn't need to be good. Even great, that will be tough. I mean, it needs to be awesome. And that's a lot of effort and that's a lot of work. Okay? So, but how to do so without a publisher? That's a tough part of it. Indies are not sized to approach the global market. Okay? I mean, some of them would have some experiences of working in bigger studios, of working or working with like in, in other countries and whatnot. But otherwise, you don't have that experience. That, that's that's the point. So, how to get access to that without giving up your game somehow to a publisher? So, and again, most of the companies that would approach us have no clue. They just don't know. Uh, so they're, they're clueless. They're coming to us and saying, look, I mean, we have this game, we believe there's something out of it, how can we make it even better and how can we make sure that eventually that's going to be the next Candy Crush? Everybody wants to have the next Candy Crush. First tip here, that might not happen, okay? But never know. So think, think in the apocalypse and think about, uh, you know, getting out of it again, isn't easy. So there are a lot of them who are, would get lucky, but for this, you need to approach like all the different services around it. So let's start by defining those publishing services. I've been talking about a few, like what is publishing, what a publisher can do for you, whatnot. When we're talking about publishing services, that would be it around it. So first, when we're talking about publishing services, we're not talking about financing. The money, you need to find it. That's where the as a service has come. Because as a service means that you would pay as it go, that you would pay that as an expense to your project. We won't be financing your project. You need to get the money first, okay? So funding is kind of extracted from this. But on the other way around, you're not giving away anything. So if you go with publishing as a service, as long as you have the money to be able to, to handle that, then you have the control. It's you who are paying for whatever services you need. So that, that's the main point of it. Then you need to differentiate two main families of services. You have everything that is pre-launch, so before you actually ship the game, and then you have everything in a post-launch, so after you ship the game. And you need to think of all of them together right up front. Because it's not just, oh, I'll ship my game and I'll just see what happens later. That doesn't happen. If you want to make a living out of game, whether it's a premium game or like a free-to-play or even a subscription, which is like the new maybe trend in iOS or whatnot, you still need to think of what will happen after. And you cannot think of what will happen after, after. You need to think of what will happen after beforehand. Because the way you'll be designing the game in the first place needs to take into account what will happen afterwards. All right? So pre-launch production services that would include QA, cleaning up your game. Your game needs to be clean, a buggy game out there. You won't have no attention. You'll have bad reviews, and that's going to kill it. 
You won't get featured. You won't have, you'll have bad reviews. You'll never get all of it. Localization, targeting global markets right away, it's important as well. If you're only doing your game in English uh, or in Spanish, great, but you'll only be featured at one place. Think about it. Doing a good localization, you can get featured on iOS, Mark, and Android, or whatever, in all different places. And that adds a lot to the value of what you're making. And it's not necessarily very expensive. And it's really worth investment. Localization is the cheapest acquisition uh, strategy that you may have. Having a good localization is paramount. And then you have all the pre-launched marketing services. And that's important as well, obviously. I mean, Pre-launch marketing services, focus groups. Not everybody can afford it, but an easy focus group is just to ask your friends and family. I mean, uh, having a friend and family uh, better in some way, I mean, that's that definitely worth it. So do that. Everything like UX, uh, UI, UX experience, I mean, do that as well. I mean, that's definitely worth it. Monetization strategy needs to come beforehand as well. You need to know how you're going to make money out of your game. Otherwise, you're going to end up unknown or poor, whichever. Um, Post-launch services, <coughs> what we would call the live services. So there you have the customer, exper customer experience again. So everything like community management, social media, everything in, around it. Live ops, including QA, localization. And localization never ends. I mean, don't shoot at all the territories once, but then you can have like one territory at a time. Oh, like my game, for whatever reason, in English, drives some attention in, I don't know, like uh, Switzerland. Well, not a good example because they have a bunch of languages, but they drive some attention in Italy. Just do Italian. Maybe it's worth it. And, and things like that. You need to know very well your game. And by the way, having decent data coming out of your game at that point, that's critical as well. So then you have the post-launch marketing services. So custom, uh, cost per install optimization, analytics, user acquisition, and again, analytics, know your game, know your data, because that's how you'll be able to improve it, and that's how you'll be able to drive customers, right? And then the most value input the publisher um, should be able to give you, and that you won't be able to get by yourself is experience. And, and that's, that's one of the critical services that is out there, is the, the consulting guidance part of it. And the project closing. Closing a project, finishing it, shipping it, if you've never done it, that's tough, man. I mean, that's, that's really a hard job. Because you need to make very tough decisions. You love this feature, sorry, it won't make it. So there are some choices like that, that someone that can have this kind of experience will be able to drive you through the process. And th that's very helpful as well. So closing a game and getting it ready to ship, again, there are some decisions that you need to have the expertise. And then this expertise will also help you to define which platforms, which territories, which games. Sometimes, I mean, we see we see some customers or some developers coming to us and say, hey, I'd like you to test this game on 500 mobile phones. Why? No, don't do that. It's worthless. I mean, nobody has like the, I mean, if there are like 12 people having this old kind of Russian mobile phone, nobody cares. Focus your energy and go through the main market. Again, it's business, okay? So, just going back a little bit before, some of this can be part of an outsourcing investment or not. Some services you can handle yourself and we'll go through it as well. Some might be worth outsourcing, but all need to be considered uh, upfront in a way or another. So self-publishing, again, self-publishing doesn't mean that you should overlook publishing. That's not about it. You still need to do it. Both those services, someone will have to do it in a way or another. So it's either yourself, either a publisher, or either a company like us, or, or there are others as well. I mean, not necessarily speaking for keywords, but um, or companies that can provide those services. And if you're expecting to make any money out of game, it doesn't end with launch uh, again. So you need to think about post-launch. So coming back to the uh, the Cloudcade experience and uh, with their games, Shop Heroes. So Shop Heroes, it's um, it's a game where there is a shop and heroes. 
and uh, you would actually like buy stuff in the shop and, and then have missions and it, it's kind of like gold farming kind of game. It's, it's really fun. I mean, if you have the opportunity to, to, to take a look at it, and then it will justify that people uh, are actually coming back to us afterwards to ship their games. Um, so we broke it down based on the experience the guys at Cloudcade have. And the guys at Cloudcade, they were like decently founded, uh, funded, so they had quite a bunch of money to do their stuff. They had a team of about like 10 people-ish. So they were in, in the category that we would call the triple I's. So like, it's more than indies, it's like indie plus, all right? And um, they were quite experienced, namely in marketing services. So anything marketing, they, they took it. And, and good thing, because actually we, we don't necessarily have most of those experiences, but they, they were very strong at it, so they, they went with it. So, and then they kept as well all the publishing choices. And that's an important part of it as well. That's the main thing that they didn't want to give away to um, to customers or to, to a publisher. They want to keep control of their game and they want to keep the choices. And the choice is what, when, where. They want to be the guys deciding about all of it. So project closing, marketing, everything they did. And we took care of QA, localization, customer support mainly. So all the basic stuff. <coughs> and we offered some consulting as well. So, and then, then we adjust as it goes. And that's the whole point of publishing as a service is that you start with something, you don't like it, skip it, and then move with something else, and then you adjust, and it, it's time and material, right? I mean, uh, all the services we sell, you pay by the hour. So if we spend like, I don't know, like uh, 200 hours uh, for the QA of the game, that's what you're gonna pay. There is no like flat fee or upfront payment or whatnot, so it's kind of a, it's not necessarily the cheapest way, but it's the way you control the more your expenses and the way you're handling all those services. Um, and that's the point here. I mean, you need to keep the flexibility, mostly in those old mobile uh, and the, the indie apocalypse thing. You need to keep the flexibility and you need to keep the agility. Sorry for the buzzword here. I know the agility, I mean, you're not supposed to talk about it anymore, but it, it works, right? It's kind of important. So you keep the control, and not that publishers wouldn't do that either. Again, I, I don't want to trash talk publishers. They do very well what they do, and they have like very good expertise in, in providing all of this. And again, someone has to do it. But sometimes, you need another relationship. <clears throat> and, and other models can exist, that's my whole point. So that all comes with both the expertise and the full control, but there are still things that you should and you shouldn't do. So, the do's first. What you should do. Quality matters. Some lessons first. I mean, even beforehand, before any of it, if your game is just good, good for you. That won't make, that won't go anywhere, okay? Even great, that's gonna be tough. Your game needs to be awesome. There are way too many games out of there. I mean, the gold rush somehow, you know, we've been talking about like Depocalypse and all of this, the gold rush is over. Uh, so now, if you want to stand out, that's going to be very difficult. And for this, you need to, be, to think awesome right from the beginning. You need to set your own expectations and think big. And because at the end of the story, the goal is the feature, the goddamn feature. I mean, it's another buzzword there, sorry about it. But if you're not featured, I mean, there's no exposure. And if you're not exposed, there won't be any sales, okay? So you need to be featured on the iOS market, on the App Store, on the Android one, on whatever, on the localized one as well. Each territory has its own like feature set. So you have as many opportunities as there are different markets. Go everywhere. Even the Microsoft market can be worth it. So anything, really, it's, it's important. You need to get featured, okay? Then localization matters again. Thinking global right away will make a huge difference. And getting featured in all different places, again, will make a huge difference. It doesn't need to go, again, all over the place on day one. Targeting strategic markets and focusing on them is important. You need to know very well the different markets to be able to address them accordingly. But also make sure that for localization that your support will handle it. The worst thing that can happen 
is that you released your game in Indonesia, for example. Because it's a very strong market, by the way. You release your game in Indonesia, great. It has some nice traction. It's featured. You get some exposure, great. And then it's forgotten. Why? Because you didn't think about customer support in Indonesia. You need to have an Indonesian dude somewhere being able to reply to tickets, to handle the community, to be able to reply to whatever comes out of there, and to be able to handle the reviews. The reviews. You also need to take care of your customers. The customer matters, all right? You need the reviews are paramount. A bad review, you're dead. It's over. Because, I mean, the, the, by the time people like download your app and get rid of it, they just see like how many stars or whatever the rating is, and then you're done. So your reviews, you need to care of it. How to get bad reviews? Treating well your customers. That's the very first rule, okay? And treating well your customers, first, make an awesome game. Said that already. Second, reply to the tickets. Interact with the community. Be there for them. They don't like to be ignored, okay? So you can't ignore those people, even in Indonesia, even elsewhere, anywhere you've, anywhere you've been releasing your game, you need to be able to support them, okay? <coughs> and once that done, um, once that done, I mean, you also need to make sure that your reviews, you're taking into account what they're saying about your game, and you're actually acting on it to make it better, because it needs to be better to still be awesome, okay? So customer support, community management, that, that's, that's very important, definitely. Then the don'ts. DIY, do it yourself. The punk model, right? That's cool. But remaining unknown too. So let's face it, I mean, indies don't have the money publishers would have. That's fine. You should have more money though. Again, work on your funding. But all the services are great, but I always hear the thing, oh, I know a guy. At some point, I remember like reading something about like, some someone found like this awesome technique for QA. He would go like to hospital lobbies. Um, so I don't know if you, I mean, how time in Mexico you guys wait to get to see a doctor. In Canada, it's uh, it's terrible. And in the lobbies, he would actually share his game with the people waiting, like with nothing happening, and asking them to report bugs. And he was like, "Yeah, that's awesome. I got like a cheap and like free QA going to hospital lobbies." Yeah, that works. That's awesome. But that's not professional QA, okay? And at some point, there is a reason why there is professional QA and some people would go through it. And do it yourself. Again, there are some cool techniques. You can do it. It's feasible. But that's, you won't get very, very far with it. And moreover, those days, again, the gold rush is over. You need to have your game awesome. So you need to treat it that way. And watch out then. That all depends on your ambitions as well. There's a lot of good games out there that nobody will ever hear about. They're just ignored. On Shop Heroes, again, that was a good game, but the goal was to make it great. So think about it. I mean, put the right money and the right effort into it. Don't think that you can get away with some workarounds in a way or another. Okay. But what what if you didn't have the money to pay for the services? I mean. Then maybe, I mean, some people would say as well that you could have lowered your ambitions and get the game out as soon as possible and as quickly as possible and then fix it later. Get it out and fix it. We're going to see. And that's the whole thing about the live market is that you can fix your stuff as it goes afterwards, right? I mean, you don't need to have everything perfect right day one. Eh, not really. That's, that's not the good way to do it. First, because even you manage to do that, you never make any money out of it. To be able to make money, you need to think your monetization model very, very soon. If you don't have a monetization money, you won't be able to fix it later because that's going to be a different game. And the quantity of effort that you're going to put in your game to be able to fix it later will be not worth it. And by that time, you'll have lost all the buzz opportunity to get your game featured or whatnot. That's going to be too late. It's, it's not worth it. And then I'm going back to localization, but even with some, some basic revenue, you need to more than that. And localization can help a lot. And the localization, a translation fail 
in the other way around can kill your game. I mean, you've seen games translated in Spanish that are so terrible that you gave away with it, right? All right. Treat your localization nicely because it, it, I, I see people who, again, work around it and say, oh, I just go with Google Translate. That's going to be awesome. Here's an example of what we actually receive from like a, an automation uh, translation company. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't see anything. It's in French anyways. But that was we sent. I mean, with Cloudcade, very nice thing. It was all coded and all the words and whatnot. We received a bunch of crap. It's not worth it. Again, there is a reason why there are professional companies doing that. And the quantity of effort that you'll end up spending in trying to get like some workarounds like that are just not worth it. So the main, the main takeaways from all of this, I mean, uh, first, set your ambitions, OK? Uh, you want to make something out of a game, then it needs to be awesome. And again, even great is not, is not, not enough. Uh, I like to compare somehow with the, um, the video game industry and what's become now with the, uh, the music industry. You know, now, I mean, Unity, Re Unreal, it's all free, right? So anybody somehow can be from your basement, you can create a game, and in a few weeks, I release it to the iOS and the App Store and get your game out and, and have some traction. The same way, like, you have a guitar and a, an iPhone and YouTube account, there you go, you're a professional musician. <coughs> there are not a lot of people doing music on YouTube that will get money out of it, okay? Not everybody is Justin Bieber. I come from Canada, by the way. So we're not supposed to bad talk about anybody called Justin. But still, it, video games is getting the same thing as well. We have, there's so many games out there, so many people releasing games every morning. And it's so easy to do so. But to be able to really do it right and get out of there, it's a lot of effort. So for this, secure your funding. Do you want to make money? Or do you want to just like do a game for your friends and your family and to show that uh, you're awesome? That, that's fine. I mean, some people like to do that. Again, same way I can take my guitar and sing on YouTube. But if you want to do a real game and make some money out of it, you need money. Making a great game is expensive. And we're talking millions of dollars, okay? If you want to be featured today and really get out of there, below $1 million, honestly, I don't think it's possible. Some people will achieve to do that. There are some unicorns out there. But not, I mean, the, the gold rush area is kind of down. So you need a lot of money. Take, take the, top 20, the top 20 gross uh, revenue in the App Store today. I took a list like yesterday just to see again what it looks like. I mean, Machine Zone, Supercell, King, Supercell, Kebab, Supercell, King, Supercell. Mojang, DNA, EA, Supercell, EA, Gameloft, Schwarzenegger. You're fighting against those guys, right? That's your competition if you want to make money. And it's not, I mean, those guys, they're not releasing their game with $50,000. They're releasing their game with at least one million, couple of millions, if not more. I mean, the iOS teams now, I mean, just to release the first layer of a game, I mean, it's at least 20 people. It's, it's, I mean, it's possible to do with less. Don't get me wrong. It's possible. And you'll be able to have some decent money. But that's going to be tough. And it's going to be tougher and tougher as time goes. I'm sorry. I don't want to sound too pessimistic. Maybe a little bit. But that's, that's a little bit what the way it is now. All right? So again, plan ahead. Get your funding. And go through publishers first to see what it looks like. And then there are more and more like companies who would actually fun games based on, on first projects, not necessarily as a publisher, but giving some advices and whatnot. And they're like super useful. And then we can help. And then plan ahead. Again, mobile revenue is not on, I mean, is on the long run. You're not making, I mean, premium games, sure. But even premium games, I mean, it's not on day one. It's not as a console game, right? So it goes like through time. So 
<coughs> you'll still have to maintain your game and to work on it afterwards to justify the money that you're putting on it. So you can't just get your game out and expect that cash will flow like, like a golden egg, chicken, whatever. I mean, that, that won't work like that. You need to do something about it, okay? Revenues comes with costs. Basic economic rule. So you need to plan on those costs as well. And when you're building your monetization, you need to build a profit and loss model. And you need to plan ahead, making sure that you'll have the actual costs to sustain the revenue that you're expecting out of it. Otherwise, that won't work. It's a business model that you need to build out of it. So you're better off anticipating those costs right from the beginning or you have very bad surprises. Just imagine how much money Machine Zone or Supercell are putting on their games on a daily basis. It's huge, okay? It's a lot of money. We're seeing some of it, it's huge. So, and then free up time, a lot of time. Depending on your ambitions again. If you want to make a lot of money, you need a lot of time and you need a lot of money. If you just want to get out something or you want to create something and you want to have like a game that at least will break even, you're going to lose two years of your life, okay? So that's, that's the way it will happen in a way or another. But you'll need a lot of time. And being able to publish your game, if you're not ready to go with a publisher, you'll have to do it yourself or go with a company like ours. But that's a very time consuming overall. So you need to plan ahead on that front as well. So, and, and if you don't have the time, you'll have to pay for it. So if you go with like a, a professional QA outsourcer, for example, Think of it that you're paying the time that you don't have to do the QA yourself. If you go with a, 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 a marketing company, same thing. You're paying for a time that you won't have to pay on your side. And you need to be flexible. So you need to, to think about profit and loss always and benefits, right, of all of this. So, and, and don't forget, there is a reason why there are publishers. Uh, if you don't want to self-publish, you have to either do their job or pay for it. That, that's my whole point. And then you can call keywords. We'll be very happy to help. And, and or publishers will contact us. I mean, most of our customers are actually the publishers themselves. But again, we're seeing more and more those companies who achieve to have this self-funding, to be really self-sufficient in terms of funding, who have set their expectations right, who have all of, them, all of it lined up right, who have like a decent first team already set up. And, and it works, it's feasible, and you can get some decent revenue out of it if you're doing that well. So, uh, again, I mean, I, I know that a lot of it, I'm saying, well, I'm saying again, you need a lot of money, but there are ways to get away with it somehow. It's feasible, but you need to do it right yet from the beginning, and it's a tough path to go through. So, that would actually, by main message, there is still hope, all right? Thank you very much. That would be actually it for me. Thank you. Do you guys have... Merci. Thank you. Ah. Gracias. Um, would you guys have any question at that point? So Raimundo is over there. And I would take questions in Spanish as much as possible. So... Okay. So the new Call of Duty is coming out, right? That I think it's called uh, Infinity Warfare, something like that. No, I got nada. I'm not the, sure. the new Call of Duty is coming out. Okay. It's called uh, Infinity Warfare, something like that. And it's from a big company, but it, it has already so bad reviews. What do you think? Do, where do they fail? Where do they fail? So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not hearing very well. Do you hear me now? See. Okay. The new, the new Call of Duty is coming out, Infinite Warfare, right? So it is from a big company, but it has so many bad reviews. Where do you think they fail? So I'm, yeah, I'm not sure I'm getting the question. I'm sorry, the sound is quite terrible. Um, so the question is, is there like uh, some bigger companies who can handle that? Is that it? Or? No. Oh, sorry. Maybe without the thing, am I here? Okay. <laughs> the new Call of Duty is coming out, right? The sorry? The new Call of Duty is coming out. Yes. And it's called uh, Infinite Warfare or something like that. And it, and it's from a big company. But yeah. it has so many bad reviews. Where do they 
Okay, so, thank you. Question was, uh, some very big companies do very big games and they still fail. <laughs> uh, I'm not too sure how to respond to that one. Most of them would come through us. Not necessarily the best answer. Um, doing a big game, I mean, take all of this, multiply that by 1,000. The challenge is the same. The kind of challenge that the Call of Duty developers or the uh, Assassin's Creed or whomever they're facing are the exact same ones and those ones, but multiplied by, I mean, by, by a thousand at least. I mean, it, the budgets are getting at crazy. We talk about hundred millions of dollars. The size of the teams are just getting crazy as well. And the pressure is just insane, okay? So, on my side, I mean, I, I've been working into a bunch of those, like AAA games and this kind of stuff. And some of them, I mean, when they're closing, somehow it's too late. And what happens most often is that they're getting so much stuck with their game, there's so much pressure, so much money in play, that when they get a time to where it's like, oops, maybe we've done something wrong, it's just too late and they need to get out of it anyways. So most of the cases, that's what happens. Then I can't necessarily talk for all of them, but yeah. Does it reply to the question? Yeah. Thank you. Any other question? Yes? Uh, you did mention about do-it-yourself is cool, but remaining known is too. Uh, when you say do-it-yourself, what do you mean about that? Do that again. Uh, what do you mean with this point? Uh, yeah. So DIY is cool, but remaining unknown too. That's it. So, um, I mean, do it yourself. It's nice. Again, there's a lot of solutions out there. Um, you can, again, go to a hospital lobby or whatever. Uh, you can go with Google Translate, but then you won't have success. You won't, I mean, at, at the end of the story again, there's a reason why they're professional services. It's because they're professional and, and it, because it matters for quality. And it, at the end of the story, going with workarounds, that's going to be very difficult to get any kind of quality. And if you're not, you don't have a quality product, and again, it needs to be awesome, you won't get featured. You'll, you'll stay unknown. You, you won't get, you would get the attention and you'll stay unknown. So making sure that all those services, I mean, will help you to actually get a great game out, like an awesome game out, that makes a difference. You can work around a lot of things, but at some point it's just not enough. And to do it yourself, you know, I, I think it's nice if you want to have your game being uh, you know, very local. You don't want to make money out of it. I mean, it, or little money or very local or something that, you know, you'll be able to be proud of. That's fine. You won't have life for two years. That's another aspect of it. But it's, it's just not enough if you want to get to the big league. Fair enough? Another question? Yes? I might as well go directly there, but... Uh, hi. Is it better to get funding for an indie game once it is already released or try to get the funds before it launches? All right. So is it better to get funding for your game before it's released or afterwards? Well, if you can have your funding before, that's definitely better. Uh, I mean, at least you know where you're going. At least you'll be able, again, to prepare for all of it. And at least you'll be able to plan on all those services and, and be ready to get the right attention right up front. So, the more you can have some decent funding, at least to go through the main steps and, and then be able to show when you have like some real product, 
be able to show that to bigger fundings, that can be escalating as well. You don't need to have your whole funding right from front, right? Right from scratch. But having a first funding will give you confidence, will be able to give you also access to some of those services right away, and will be able to give you the opportunity to have something to show and then get the real funding. So I, I think that would be probably the best way to approach it. If you can manage to get through all of it without any external funding and without like the big money and still get, they get your game out and then go for the funding, honestly, I think it's too late. Uh, because fixing a game is, is super difficult. And uh, you're better off like just redoing it than, than trying to fix it afterwards. So, yeah, take the money first, but you can go like ladder. Fair enough? Any other question? Yes? That's my challenge. Uh, you can tell me directly, that's going to be easier. Uh, I don't know if you care about matching over 9 and what happened afterwards. The game was really well founded. You had launching a proper promotion, but in the end, uh, it was pure back game. What do you think it happened with a thousand times? Okay. So the question is there is a game, I don't remember which one, but. Who, uh, which was well funded, it was good, it had everything that it needed according to the model, but still didn't work. Well, they don't all work. Uh, and on this, I mean, there are so many games. A and sometimes there's one thing that I didn't talk about here. It's timing. One game can do awesome one day in that place for whatever reason. Sometimes, I mean, we would be able to, I mean, marketing companies would be able to justify that afterwards by a lot of charts or whatnot. Oh, this is the reason why it works. Truth is, we have no fucking clue. All right? So sometimes it's, it's just timing. It's just like it was the right game at the right time for the right thing. And, and I'm sorry there is no better answer to that, but that, that's the main thing. All right? Oh, I love popping up everywhere. That's going to be very far away from me if I need to run there. Hey, if you have an indie, if you have an indie game, how you can compete with a AAA game? I mean, you don't have any money to publish it, and then how you can compete with that? So, if you don't have the money, how can you compete with AAA games? Well, you can't. I mean, sorry, at the end of the story again, you need to have like, so, some, some very good money and some very nice funding and a great game. You need to have a AAA game yourself. The one thing though is that mobile games, it's not console games. So I mean, a console games, I would tell you it's not one million, two million dollars that you need. A console games, that's 50 million. It's another kind of business. On the mobile side, you can still, with a fairly decent amount of money somehow, you can still make very, very good things. And that's what makes a huge difference. But again, you're competing with Supercell, Machine Zone, EA, I mean, Schwarzenegger again. Th those are the guys out there. Uh, and yeah, that's going to be tough. Then again, set your expectations. Uh, see what are your ambitions. If you want to compete with the AAA games, you need to have the same tools that they have. If you want to have your own special niche market, which is a good way to do it, by the way. Niche is good. I mean, if you want to do that, your own game for a very specific market, th there are ways to do that that would be definitely cheaper. And there will be a public for that. But then the expectations will be, would go accordingly, right? So if you're not ready to fight against the AAA, go elsewhere. That's what I would say. Any other question? Last one, I guess, or uh, no? Oh, well, I go for it. Oh, all right. Hello. Hello? Uh, my question is, what do you do when you have your, your game almost completely finished, and you ship it to the publishers, and you send all the emails in the contact boxes, and you tell them, well, this is my game. Are you interested in publishing? And they don't answer, because my main problem has been that because I have, get, who, I have uh, friends 
who have uh, worst games that have been answered. And, and, and the main thing is that most of the people have their contact box and they want to, to see your game, but they don't reply. And the truth is that when you are at, at this stage of you are just uh, looking for a partner or for a publisher to ship the game, what's your recommendation or what do you recommend to do? So yeah, some, some publishers fail. That's, that's the point, right? So sometimes you would find a publisher, you got a decent game, you got a solution, it's working out, and the publisher, well, for whatever reason, they say, well, you know what? Screw you. I, I, won't, I won't ship it. <laughs> Again, that's why there is, we're developing this uh, publishing as a service experience. And that somehow, <laughs> I don't know how to respond that without, without bashing the publishers, but uh, I mean, there are some good publishers and bad ones. And, and you need, if you want to go with the publisher, choose the right one and, and be ready for that because that can happen. Uh, if you don't want to take the risk, there are other options. And that was my whole point there, is that you can try to self-publish, still taking advantage from professional services, and still taking advantage from everything a publisher will be able to provide you with. You'll have to fund it yourself, though, so it's, it's kind of, it's not more expensive, but it means that you need to have the money up front, which is more difficult to get, but at least you'll have the control, and you'll be the one deciding whether it's worth shipping or not. Because going with the publisher, I mean, that's the point. That they will fund you money, but at some point they can pull the plug and you have no control on it. So, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right. Any other question? There was one over there, yeah. Hello. In a single phrase, only one. Can you tell me why the Atari uh, ET game failed? Why did it fail? Wait, which game failed? Atari ET. Remember it? The Atari? one that was buried in the, in the, in the desert? The cartridge that buried in the desert, remember? Um, well, <laughs> a lot of, a lot, it, had, it had a lot of funding. It had everything. Yeah. Why did it fail? Yeah, well, the, uh, yeah. At Atari is a special one. So... <laughs> Um, I, I don't know about that game precisely, I'm sorry. At the end, sorry again, there's, there's timing, there's just, I mean, even if your game you're well funded, I mean, you can put a lot of money in your game. Putting money is not quality. It's not because you put money on your game that the game is good. Don't get me wrong on this. Uh, you can, it's going to be very difficult to have a good game without money, but it's fairly easy to have a crappy game with a lot of money too, right? And some publishers and some com companies have been quite good at that, like throwing money on games that are just terrible. Um. <laughs> All right. I think we're. Oh, I'm another one. Sure. Uh, about the ET game, I think it was because the the game was pushed to a deadline, like one mod. To, to make the game and the developers could not make a good game because it's impossible to make a good game in like one mode. That was why, why the ET game failed. Uh, about the question, I was one. I was about the no, I don't know if you know the Mega Man clone, Mike Team number one, Mike Team number nine. Uh, that game was r really hype. It was received a funding. Enormous, about like three millions, I think, uh, and that game didn't perform. It was a big failure. What do you think they failed? What what went wrong? Okay, so I mean, somehow the questions are related. I mean, what what makes a game successful? It's it's not just funding. What I'm saying here is how you'll get more chances to make it happen, right? It doesn't mean that it will happen. And at some point, I mean, <laughs> making a good game, I mean, I don't have the magic recipe, sorry, I mean, and nobody has. Otherwise, I mean, we wouldn't be here to talk about it. Uh, so, a good game is timing, it's uh, the nice, mar the good market, the right target. 
avoiding making Me Too games, that's something I would advise, because making the same games that other ones do, I mean, you never get anywhere with that. So being original, being creative, being beautiful, being artistic, that, that will make a beautiful game. I think that even more than having uh, you know, a lot of money to do so, at the end of the story, that's a talent. We're still talking about a cultural product. It, it's an artistic product. It's not, it's, I mean, somehow it's like a movie, I mean. You can throw as much like money in it. You can even like have artificial intelligences that will tell you how to do the best game out there. That's crap, that never works. Why? Because it's, it's, it's art, it's culture. And that's not something you can uh, you can decide up front and, and and guess up front. What you can guess up front though, and what you can really assess beforehand is how to make money out of it. So having a good game, again, I, I, I won't be able to tell you what will be the good game or what won't be. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But if you want to make money out of it, there you'll have to push money into it. Otherwise, that won't work. That, that's, that would be my main lesson somehow. Fair enough? All right. I think that is it. Um, all right. Muchas gracias a todos. Mucho gusto. Yeah, if you need my contact or whatever, I think it's somewhere in there and uh, uh, happy to reply. Thank you.